The Roman Senate Tribunes The Roman Senate was one of the most advanced forms of government in the ancient world. As the influence and territory of Rome increased, the roles and responsibilities of the people in charge also increased. As a result, in order to maintain a smooth operating of the government, certain roles were distributed to other officers. One of these officers was that of Tribune. Now, a Tribune was a title of various elected officials in ancient Rome, with the two most important officers being the Tribune of the Plebs and the Military Tribunes. The history of the Tribune goes back to the times of the Roman tribe. The three original tribes were each headed by a Tribune, whose role was to represent each tribe in civil, religious and military matters. During the Roman Kingdom, the Tribune of the Knights was the commander of the king's personal bodyguard. This office was second only to the king and as a result held the authority to pass laws and also preside over the Comitia Curata. Another duty of the Tribunes was to lead the cavalry into battle. However, the Tribune would have to give way to the king if the king wanted to lead the charge himself. This Tribune could also in theory take away the king's imperium or authority to command. One of the most noticeable tribunes of the era was Brutus, who was the nephew of Tarquin the Proud, the last Roman king. Brutus was in fact the man who called to revoke the king's imperium, and as a result was one of the key figures in the fall of the Roman monarchy. By 494 BC, the Tribuni Plebis, or simply the Tribune of the Plebs, was instituted after the first secession of the Plebs. The secession of the plebs highlighted the huge divisions between the poor plebs and the rich families of Rome. As a result, the tribune of the plebs was set up to protect the interest of the plebs against the actions of the senate as well as the annual magistrates who were almost entirely from the richer class. As a tribune of the pleb, you would have power over the plebeian assembly and were allowed to propose legislation before it. Only one of these tribunes could preside over this assembly which had the power to pass laws which directly affected the plebeians. By 287 BC, these laws could also affect all Roman citizens, and by the 3rd century, the Tribune could propose legislation before the Senate. An important note to make about the Tribunes of the Plebs is that they were not magistrates, as they were elected by the plebeians alone and not by the whole Roman people. However, the whole body of the plebeians were pledged to protect the tribunes against any assault or interference during their terms of office. The plebs were also the source of the tribune's power. Any tribune could intercede on behalf of a Roman citizen to prevent an act of a magistrate or other official going through. Citizens could also appeal decisions of these magistrates via the tribunes, who were then obliged to determine the legality of the action before the magistrate could proceed. This power also allowed the tribunes to forbid, or more commonly known as veto, any act of the senate or other assemblies. Only a dictator was exempt from these powers. Tribunes also had no power to affect the actions of provincial governors. As well as tribune of the plebs, there was also the military tribunes. These were usually young men in their late twenties who wanted a senatorial career. Each tribune would be assigned to command a portion of the Roman army, However, he was subordinate to the magistrates, the pro-magistrates, and ultimately the legion's commander, the legate. Later in the Roman army, a tribunus was a senior officer, sometimes called a comes, who would command a cavalry vexillito. The title survived in the Eastern Roman army until the 7th century. Thank you for watching and listening. All sources are listed and linked in the description below. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I've been the Ancient History Guy, and as always, I'll be seeing you later.